Today, I'm gonna to show you these six different types of tripod heads that are available. I'm gonna show you what they're good for and what might be best for you and your photography. Good tripods normally come in two sections. You've got the legs and you've got the head. The legs will obviously give you the height that you need, but once at that height, the tripod head is very important to get the camera leveled off and exactly where you want it. So I've got these six different tripod heads and I'm gonna show you what each of them are good for, what to look out for when buying one and what to avoid. When choosing a tripod head, the first thing to do is work out what you'll be shooting the most then work out your budget, and then get the best one you can afford. I've used cheap kit and expensive kit, and the expensive kit just makes the job quicker and easier to complete, and it kind of just makes it more pleasurable to do. There's nothing worse than having to fight with your tripod head or your tripod trying to get the camera into the right position as the light you want to photograph is slowly disappearing. So the six that I'm gonna go through today are a video tripod head, a ball head, a geared head, a nodal pan head, a kind of flex, a Z type of head, and then a gimbal head. A ball head is a great all-rounder. It consists of a ball in a cradle, so that's this bit in here, and then you have a few adjustment knobs and then a quick release plate on the top. That quick release plate can be the RC2 from Manfrotto or the Arca Swiss. I use an L bracket, so I prefer the Arca Swiss type, so I can very quickly change my camera from landscape to portrait. Also, they're relatively small and lightweight, so are fantastic for traveling or using on long hikes when you just wanna take some static images and long exposures. The main thing with a ball head is it's very quick and easy to get your camera in around about the right position. So it has speed, but not precision. So if I was to put my camera on here and I was setting up and I had something that I want to photograph, I could get it in the right position and then tighten it off. The problem with this is if you're just a little bit out and you want to adjust it, you have to loosen it off and it'll move. And it might not move in the way that you want it to. Now there are a lot of ball heads on the market and you can get some really cheap ones and you can get some really expensive ones. The cheaper ones tend to be a little bit problematic. When you tighten them up, it might move a little bit or you tighten this up, so you tighten the friction knob up and you let it go and then it settles. This one from k &F is pretty solid. I really like this one and this is the one I use quite a lot. I used to have one from Manfrotto that had one knob for everything. So that was one knob for panning, for tilting, for moving the camera around and everything like that. Whereas this one from k &F, it's got this one so I can set the camera in and I tighten up that friction knob and then it's got this one so once that camera's solid, I can turn the camera and that ball head is still locked off. One other thing with these as well is if you don't use an L bracket, what you can do is loosen them up and a lot of them have this groove in the side. So you can drop your camera into that portrait position with a ball head. So if you want absolute precision, this is not so good. It's easy to get in around about the right place, but it's not easy to get in the perfect place. Also, the cheaper you go, the more likely it is to drift with a bit of weight or move as you tighten it. So if you are gonna go for a bull head, choose wisely and spend as much as you can afford. The next head is a video tripod head, and this is obviously for videography. They tend to be bigger and heavier than some of the photography tripod heads, but they tend to have a few features that really do suit shooting film and video. And by this, I mean dampening. This will give it a much more smooth pan or tilt when filming. If you've ever tried doing a pan or tilt with just a ball head, unless they've got some kind of weird design in it that kind of dampens it out, it's an absolute nightmare. And especially at the end of a long lens. And this is where a video tripod head really comes into its own. Now I don't have it on at the moment, but video heads do have an arm on it as well to help that panning and tilting motion. I'll actually grab it now and put it on this one. So they normally come with arms like this. This is normally adjustable, so you can put it to exactly the position you want it. And then if you've got your pan and your tilt loose, you can do one or both. So you can really move it around and do some really small, smooth movements with your camera and with this tripod head. And that all comes down to that dampening. Now, another thing that video tripod heads tend to do is split up the panning and the tilting. So if I loosen this, I can just pan. If I tighten that off and loosen this, I can just tilt or I can do both. 
so it really does allow you to do smooth and dampened movements. They also normally come with a big Manfrotto plate or something similar to the Manfrotto plate. And by the Manfrotto plate, I'm talking about these long thin ones. And you'll normally see these on electronic gimbals as well. So this enables you to move your camera forwards or backwards and balance it on the tripod head. Because if you loosen off the tilt and it's balanced too far forwards, the camera drifts down forward. And if you set it too far back, it drifts backwards. So that's why it has these big, long forward and backward adjustable plates on them. Now you can use these for photography, but it's hard to put your camera in the portrait position. And in fact, if you just have it on this Manfrotto plate, you can't really put it in that portrait position unless you have an Arca Swiss adapter plate and an L bracket. If you do travel and shoot film, you can get some smaller dampened heads like the Manfrotto B3, but these do get wobbly with any decent amount of weight on them. And when using a long lens as well, they start to really show the wobble in your footage. So if you do shoot a lot of things with a telephoto lens, get a good decent sized one with a heavy set of tripod legs. So the one I have here is the MVH500AH from Manfrotto, but this stays at home most of the time because it is quite heavy. Although it is really good and I've used it to film kite surfers with a 100 to 400 millimeter lens and it works well in that scenario. Now, if you are going to use this for both video and stills, it's worth putting an Arca Swiss adapter plate on like I just have. So this means you can take it off from landscape position to a portrait position really quickly and really easily. This adapter basically changes this from just a video head into a hybrid head, so you can shoot both photo and video with it. Now you can probably tell that I'm a fan of these L brackets. I do have them on all of my cameras and they really do come in handy. They make things so much easier. If you don't know what an L bracket is, I've done a video on them already, so click on the link in the corner or in the description. The company Edelkrone first came out with this concept and it really is a funky tripod head. These can be moved into position quickly and nowadays a lot of other Chinese companies have adopted this design. Now I'm a little bit tight so I bought a Chinese copy and I kind of regret it. What I've found is these points here are either too tight or too loose and you never kind of get it right. So if you put a heavier lens on or if you're really sort of hanging the camera over the edge whoops it drifts down like that so you can see straight away that the cheaper ones don't really hold your camera in all of the positions that this tripod head lets you hold it now i always carry an allen key because the one i've got does have these allen key bolts in there so i can tighten it up when i want it in certain positions now i don't really use this on my tripod i use it more on my slider because it's nice and compact and when I have the slider on the ground, I can get that camera really low and much lower than if I had a video tripod head or a ball head. So if you are interested in this type of head, make sure you get the Edelkrone one as the copies tend to be pretty rubbish. If you can't afford an Edelkrone one and you still want to get one of these, make sure you get one with the adjustable panning section on it. And by that, I mean this bolt under here so you can actually pan it side to side. The first one I got didn't have this. I tightened it onto my slider and it was at an awkward angle and I couldn't pan that to the position that I wanted to. So it really is important to get one with this panning motion in the base. If you're a sports or wildlife photographer, you might have seen or you might already own one of these heads. These allow you to move the camera around effortlessly. And if you have a really long lens on there, you can move your camera into different positions and if you've balanced it properly, it will stay in that position. When you're using, let's say, the 100 to 400 or the 200 to 600 millimeter lens, or one of the really long prime telephoto lenses, these are fantastic. I only rent those bigger lenses as I don't really use them that often at the moment. But if you're getting into wildlife or sports photography, this is where this kind of gimbal tripod head really helps. Now I bought one of the cheaper ones to show you this type of head and it's pretty bad. So make sure you do spend at least $100 on one of these, if not more. The more money you spend, the more features they'll have and the smoother the action will be. What you basically want is a nice smooth panning motion and also a nice smooth tilting motion. Also, the center point of the camera should be over the center point of the tripod. So 
the person who made this hasn't really done it that well at all. And that's why this one isn't really good. Also, when I loosen the tilt function up, this is really wobbly and it's a bit all over the place. With the more expensive ones, these will have ball bearings in them. The motion will be nice and smooth. And also some of them will have a bit of dampening in as well. So the more money you can spend on them, the better it is because you don't want to put your really big expensive lens on a really cheap tripod head. Like with a motorized gimbal for filming, you need to balance these for the size of camera and lens combo that you're using. So when you point it in a certain direction, so if I point it up like that, I've balanced this already, it will stay in that position. If you don't balance it properly, what you'll find is it'll drift out of place. So once it is balanced properly, you may be photographing an animal and you'll be able to tilt it in that position and the camera will stay in that position. And you won't have to hold it, you won't have to struggle with those really big lenses. Another thing with these gimbal heads is that once you've balanced your camera on them, you can have quite a lot of weight on that tripod head and you can move it effortlessly. So when tracking birds or maybe planes in the sky, this makes it a lot easier. Now the one downside to these gimbal tripod heads is the setup time. If you change the lenses, you'll need to rebalance it. But if you only shoot with one lens or one telephoto lens, you can keep all of the settings exactly the same for a quicker setup. With a geared head, this gives you the ultimate amount of precision. These heads have adjustment knobs for each of the three axes, and you can either move them a lot. So let's say I pull this out, I can move it quite a lot. And then as I lock it into place, I can then turn this for that really fine adjustment. This means that you can get your camera exactly where you want it. Now it is a bit fiddly to get the camera in a roundabout the right place, but once it's there, you then start adjusting with these three knobs and get the camera in exactly the right place. So if you're a stickler for precision, this would be the tripod head for you. I'd say these would be good for macro photography if you're really tight on your subject on maybe a telephoto macro lens and just need to move the camera ever so slightly. And also I found them really good with landscape photography. They are a little bit heavy and it does mean that you're adding more weight to your bag if you're going for a hike. But once you get your camera in that position, you can really fine tune it and you can really look at your frame and see what you want in that frame and you can kind of exclude things or you can change the horizon and then get it spot on. Now the one downside to these geared tripod heads is that they're not that small and they're quite heavy. So for hiking and traveling, they are quite cumbersome. I would love to have one of these everywhere I go, but it just kind of adds a little bit too much weight to my kit. So if I'm doing landscape photography and the location's not too far from my car, I will take this tripod head. I have the Benro geared head and it is really good, but there is one quirk with this. When you turn these, obviously that's your fine adjustment, but when you come to the big adjustment, you've got to grab these, and it's weird, you've got to turn them the opposite way. So I've got to turn it as if I'm tightening it, and then that means I can do big adjustments on each of the axes. So again, I turn this, and the way I'm looking at it, it looks like I'm tightening it. So that moves it that way, and then it locks back into place, and then I adjust it. It's just one of the quirks of these gear heads. It just feels a bit strange. You're always turning it the wrong way and you're like, why isn't that working? But it's tightening it. Whereas if you turn it that way, it loosens it. Just one of the quirks of it. And I just wanted to let you know about that quirk. Now this one also has an Arca Swiss quick release plate. Again, it works really well with my L bracket. So I can switch it from the portrait to the landscape position really quickly. This next gadget is a nodal pan head. Now it's packed down at the moment, so I'll build it up and then I'll show you what it's good for. So this is the 360 type of nodal pan head and it allows you to shoot big super wide panoramas and to be able to stitch multiple layer panoramas together effortlessly. You set it up so the tripod's level and then build it up so it sits like this. You need to get your camera and your lens to the point where you don't get any parallaxing. And by parallaxing, I mean when you pan or tilt your camera, sometimes you'll find that things closer to you move differently to the things in the background, depending on where you point the camera. 
And the idea of this tripod head is to stop that movement from happening. So when you point the camera one way, it pivots on that nodal point so you don't get any parallaxing whatsoever. Like I've already said, this is good for panoramas and really big landscapes. Also, if you haven't got a wide angle lens, this will allow you to shoot much wider by making it easier for your computer to stitch multiple layered panorama shots together. Now it does pack down pretty flat and doesn't weigh too much. So you could keep one of these in your bag and maybe use one of the other tripod heads. But when it comes to setup times, it does take a while to build it up and get the camera into the right position. So again, if you wanted speed, you'd probably want to go for a ball head. But if you love shooting panoramas and it's something that you really want to get into, I'd say go for one of these heads. Now I have the basic model from Niwa and it is quite basic. So if you want to get the best out there, you can't really go much wrong with the really right stuff ones. They make a whole host of nodal pan heads from the really big ones to some smaller travel ones. They are quite expensive though, but you do get really good quality and they are really well engineered. Now I don't exclusively shoot panoramas, but every now and then I do want to get one. So I keep this in my bag and when I do see a scene that works really well for a panorama, I'll break this out and I'll take that panorama. And it just means that the computer will have an easier time in stitching that image together. So the way these nodal pan heads work is that first of all, you line the center of the lens up with the center of your tripod, and then you move the camera backwards and forwards until you find that pivot point. So you're not gonna get any parallaxing when you move the camera. Then let's say you're doing a multiple layered panorama, you'd point the camera down and then you'd start at one point, take a photograph, take another photograph, take another photograph and so on and so forth. And then you tilt it to that horizontal point, do exactly the same again. You take your series of photos and then point it up and do exactly the same thing. Now with this bottom bit, this enables you to point the camera and it will click into place at given spaces. So you'll take a photo, it'll click into place, you'll take a photo there. It'll click into place, you'll take a photo there. So it gives you even spaces between each photo. And the same with this vertical piece. It clicks into place, it clicks into place. So when your computer comes to look at stitching all of those images together, they're all evenly spaced. And if you use the sphere projection, it works really well. So if you're a sports shooter and you do a lot of things on a really long telephoto lens, a gimbal head's really good for that. If you want to shoot a few things or you're a videographer and you use a slider a lot, this Z tilt head is really good. If you want precision, you maybe do macro photography or you don't mind a bit more weight and you want to get your landscapes absolutely perfect, a gear head is really good for that. If you shoot big panoramas, a nodal head is really good and it enables your computer to kind of struggle less when it's stitching them together. Good all rounder is the good old ball head. And then if you're a videographer, obviously the video head is really good for that. And also if you're a hybrid shooter, if you shoot videography and photography, the video tripod head is really good, but make sure you get an L bracket for your camera and put an Arca Swiss adapter on that so you can shoot in the landscape or the portrait orientation. Now, what tripod head do you use? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you like best about it. Or if you're in the market to get a new one, let me know in the comments below what you're thinking of getting. It'll be great to hear your thoughts. Now, if you want to learn more about photography, click on this video next. Or if you want to binge watch a load of my photography tutorials, click down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials, videos, and reviews on everything photography and videography. I'll see you next time.